Hello YouTubers, this is Anubifar. I have a very rare opportunity to bring you the information on the newest version of Verpal's throttle. Verpal names their products by generation, with CM and CM2 used to describe the evolution of the first. The Verpal CM2 throttle has obvious visual cues from its predecessor, but they really broke the mold this time, and it's very nice to see something unique. Over the years I've seen firsthand how the build quality, materials used, components, and the circuitry have grown up. The new throttle then is a little bit like the Alpha Grips, as they are clearly the result of rigorous feedback from the community who wanted more analog inputs, more buttons, and more axes. There were some features that weren't carried over, such as an adjustable detent or the covered holy crap switch. During testing, I didn't miss it for Star Citizen, but I imagine in DCS, I think that the detents would have been a great addition for afterburner stages and engine shutdown. The new design reduces the footprint, which left less space for switches. The feet are there for desk use and work very well to keep things in place. It's also great then that they're removable, resulting in a super clean looking product when mounted. The metal housing is 4 mil thick, solid steel, with chamfered edges and a semi-gloss black powder coating. The grip itself is chunky with no sharp edges, a nice diamond pattern for grip and worthy of that CM2 name. At the rear we see the same newest implementation with a removable USB capable that has a metal plug and an auxiliary port to allow controllers to be daisy chained together for a clean install. The main point of any throttle is for it to be a great throttle. This one's addressed something that's very much an issue. Verpal left 3mm between the split throttle to ensure that they would never collide. Let's run down the bindings. There are axes, encoders, switches, and buttons. Axes are analog like XYZ. Encoders, switches, and buttons are binary like a key binding. The base has two main axes which could be combined to operate as one, plus a third bindable axis labeled flaps for whatever you may like. All axes have a resolution of 16,384 points of data from 0 to 100%. The sensors are magnetic and therefore contactless. There are four two-way toggles, T1 through T4, that each operate as two opposing bindings. When T1 is in the down position, bind number 41 is active and 42 is off. When T1 is in the up position, bind 41 is off and 42 is active. This is a nice implementation of a push-pull switch because it opens up more options than a normal on-off switch. There are three normally off two-way switches, which are T5, T6, and T7. These are dead man normal center that activate two binds when moved either up or down. B1 through B6 are the RGB illuminated push button switches that have the most satisfying tactile click to date. I'm going to be doing a video in the future on how to configure these specifically. They can simply be left all one color. They can be programmed to do some pretty cool stuff. They can each be a unique color. They can each be dimmed, brightened, or turned off. E1 and E2 are three-way rotary encoders. Left or right or push are each a keybind. These could be used for any feature that has a plus minus reset function like shield power or zoom. And finally on the base is a five position mode switch that acts as individual binds, or if you have some time, it can be used to create some more complex functionality. The grip is where the bulk of the bindings are. On the far left, there's a large three-way rotary encoder that can be easily used with your pinky. There's a single push button and then a three-way rocker. On the right side, there's an analog slider with a 50% hump. There's a full five-way hat, and then the most requested feature of an analog mini stick with push that's perfectly placed for use with my index finger. I never had any issues using it with precision even when moving the throttle axis. On your left thumb, there's another rotary encoder with a five-way. There are two more five-ways and three push buttons. So let's recap that. Six axes, four encoders, five five-way hat switches, one three-way hat switch, four two-way switches, three three-way switches, six RGB buttons, and four normal buttons. So despite being smaller than its predecessor, it actually has an increase of bindable features. Some had comment that there's no covered emergency switch, which is true. However, Verpal's releasing an auxiliary button box that adds even more buttons, and it has two of them. I decided to open the unit to search for a drag clutch. Each of the three main axes can be adjusted with more or less resistance easily with a 10 millimeter wrench, the blue circuit boards are each neatly bolted to the frame. All wires are protected and strapped where needed or covered with heat shrink. They're out of the way of moving parts as much as possible. As I said earlier, the CM2 throttle comes ready to sit on a table with two removable rails and two feet on each. Below the unit are four threaded holes in a familiar pattern, meaning that it will directly mount to all legacy Verpal mounts. 
Monster Tech Express shipped a brand new CM2 mounting adapter, which offers a fair bit of adjustment. So a special thank you to them for setting me up ready for testing of this new refreshed hands-on stick and stick and throttle. If you decide to surface mount this into a cockpit, it would be very simple to pass bolts through up from the underside, resulting in that super clean install. I'd like to end with my thoughts. The quality, build and experience of using it are all fantastic. It's easy to see and feel after spending some time with the CM2 throttle that it is the next evolution. All metal internally, creative button placement, and everything within reach without having to release or move your hand. I'm going to spend some more time customizing the lighting and I will be working on a full binding setup with recommendations that you can add to your own configuration. This is not meant to replicate a jet or spaceship. I love its very clean look. There's a little bit of sassiness with the RGB lights and of course the red switches being within yellow warning areas. As a device, it's very impressive. It's solid, internally everything is where it should be, there's no hot glue, and it should last a lifetime. I'm going to mention now the answer to the number one comment, which is out of stock. For those of you that don't know, Verpal does publish its restock schedule to the day, minute, and the second. If you're the first one to check out, you're going to get what you want, but you do need to be quick. And that's it. I hope that I was able to provide you a complete overview of this product so that you're able to make an important informed choice. I feel very strongly that it's my duty to be complete as possible as this is an expensive product and it's meant to last a lifetime. Thank you to Verpal for providing this early look at their newest product. Please stay tuned because immediately after this video, I'm reviewing the Alpha Grip. I'd appreciate your support by sharing the video to friends or org mates. This is a community supported channel that offers content to you ad free. Thank you very much for spending your time with me. Fly safe and I'll see you in the verse.